Hello, my name is Paige Turner. In this video, we will learn about the repeating table question. A repeating table question should be used when users need to enter information in a table in a structured tabular format. This will save space as a repeating table only displays rows that contain actual data. The main parent question needs to be added first and then add associated questions for each column afterwards. A repeating table uses one or multiple sub-questions to make up the full table. In this simple example, we will look at creating a repeating table for expenses. The table will contain six questions, allowing the user to select the date, select a category of expense, add a description, and enter the cost and quantity of this expense. The total will be added up automatically at the end. Let's assume you have already created a form with a couple of steps. The form already contains other questions to the steps and you now need to build the repeating table. In the relevant step, click Add Question. Make sure you fill in the question title and code and select repeating table as the question type. Enter the text you want to display for adding a new row to the table. The standard label is add new row, but if you prefer the text to be different, enter the new text here. For example, add additional expenses. The theme allows you to pick a color scheme from the table. In this example, we will use the default. With this example, we want users to be able to add and delete rows, so we won't set a fixed number of rows, as this will prevent the user from adding or deleting rows. You can use the footer to add text boxes or expression boxes that add up the values in a column, or you can add questions to the footer row. The footer doesn't appear in the repeating table by default, so check this option if you want to turn it on. In this example, we need it to display the total cost. By default, no row numbers are displayed, but you can check this option to add them in. You can allow users to add multiple rows in one go rather than have to add them one at a time. You can also set the default number of rows to be displayed it has to be at least one. By default, the question title appears to the left of the input box, which in this case is the entire repeating table. If you opt not to show the question title, the repeating table simply moves out to the left and appears under the other question titles. By default, no row You are now ready to add sub-questions to your repeating table. Let's use the simple example from earlier and create a table for adding itemized expenses. To add the first question, click Add Sub-Question. Fill in the question's title, description, etc. In this example, we will create a date question for the date, where we will set the default date to today's date. Use a single line of text for the description. For the category in the example, we might choose a choice question where we can enter the possible expenses in the choice field. Or, alternatively, we can choose a lookup question which looks at SharePoint lists with those expenses. This way, expense categories will be easily accessible for future alterations. Add a number question for the cost per item. Add another number question for a quantity. And a calculated question which would show the total cost per line item. Finally, we'll add the calculated question to the footer which sums up all the expenses.
When you create the expense flow, you will see the title of the repeating table question. The Add New Row button has been renamed to Add Additional Expenses, and the rows are numbered. Now let's make some changes to the appearance of our repeating table. We will change back the New Row label to Add New Row. We will change the theme to the green theme. Untick the box Show Row Numbers and show question title on the form. You can drag and drop sub-questions if they end up in the wrong order. You can also modify it by clicking the pen symbol or you can remove a sub-question by clicking the X. Remember to save the changes to the flow. The changes are applied to all new forms. To test the result, create a new form. This time, we can see that the colour of the repeating table has changed. Row numbers and title have disappeared. Here, we need to select Expense category from the drop-down list. Next, we enter Cost and Quantity. Total cost per line item will automatically be calculated in the last column. And question in the footer will add up all the expenses you've entered. If you want to delete a record, simply click on the X symbol at the end of each row. If you need to upload more than one document, use a repeating table. Just add a repeating table question with only one sub-question, file, upload question. When you create a form, you will have the ability to add multiple documents. And what if you want to show all values from one of the SharePoint list columns in the repeating table? Like in this example, let's see how to set this up. At the flow level, click on Add Rules, Data Integration, and select the Get List Data rule. In the Rule Editor, make sure that you select Event as On Loaded. Select the Expense Category list. This is the list where you get data from. Tick the box Map Repeating Table and select the relevant repeating table. You have the option to append, to add to the data or overwrite, which replaces what was there already. And finally, map the first question in the repeating table with the relevant column from the list. This is an expense category list. At the flow level, click on Add Rules, Data. Some question functionality is a bit different when it's used within a repeating table compared to being used in a standalone question. You cannot select repeating table questions from the rules placed on the form or step level. You can see here there is not an option to select questions from the table in the rule editor while on the flow or the step level. The same applies to setting up any conditions. We can only select standalone questions here. If you need to use table questions in your rule, the best method is to set up the rule on the questions in the repeating table. As you can see, while on the question level, we are able to use other questions from the repeating table. Here we will enter the condition that for example, if the selected category is subsistence allowance, then we disable the cost per item question. Also, using a set question value business rule, we can set cost per item to a specific amount, for example, 3.85 euros, when the selected category is subsistence allowance.
Now let's see the rules in action. Create an expenses form. Select subsistence allowance as the category. You can see that cost per item question populates with the value we set up earlier and we can't edit this question. This rule applies only to subsistence allowance. So if you select a different expense category, you will be able to enter the value in the cost per item field. You cannot. This concludes the video about repeating tables. Thank you for watching.